Hello, my name is Dr. Tim Solomon, and I'm an associate member in the departments of breast oncology and immunology at the Moffitt Cancer Center. And I'd like to give a quick summary of uh, our presentation on the updates from ASCO 2021 for early stage breast cancer. And in our presentation, we covered three key uh, presentations. One was the practice changing Olympia trial. Second was the EA1131 study for platinum use after neoadjuvant therapy and triple negative disease. And then we summarized some key findings from the WSG ADAPT HER2 positive trial. And in the Olympia study, uh, we covered that uh, this was a large phase three study for women with germline BRCA1-2 mutated breast cancer that were randomized um, following either neoadjuvant or adjuvant therapy to get one year of Olaparib, uh, 300 milligrams twice daily versus placebo um, for one year. And uh, the key take-home message from this trial showed that the treatment with Olaparib was indeed successful in reducing the risk of invasive disease-free survival at the three-year um, time point of analysis, showing an 8.8% difference in the rate of recurrence um, between the two arms, which was highly statistically significant and practice changing. Um, the analysis was immature for overall survival. However, this is still ongoing. All subsets of patients with germline BRCA1-2 mutated breast cancer appeared to benefit from the treatment. And the toxicity was as expected with Olaparib, uh, with relatively low rates of discontinuation and no significant safety signal for delayed adverse events of special interest like uh, leukemia or new primary malignancies. And so uh, this looks like this is going to be a practice changing development for our women with mutated uh, BRCA associated breast cancers. And um, this will require us to test larger numbers of women than we're usually accustomed to uh, for BRCA mutations in order to select them for this important adjuvant treatment. Uh, the second presentation that we covered was data that was presented by Dr. Meyer, uh, looking at uh, the role of adjuvant platinum um, versus capecitabine in triple negative breast cancer patients following new adjuvant chemotherapy in the EA1131 study. And this was based on the fact that we knew platinums have activity in triple negative breast cancer by increasing PCR rates, but there was some question as to whether or not they improve cure rates over time. And so a phase three trial was designed in order to uh, enroll triple negative breast cancer patients, uh, either to be uh, observed versus um, get treatment with carboplatin or cisplatinum. And the third arm was capecitabine, uh, 1,000 milligrams per meter squared for six cycles. And the bottom line was that uh, based on an interim analysis in early uh, 2021, it was determined by the DSMC that this trial was unlikely to meet its primary endpoint and that it would not demonstrate conclusively that platinum agents uh, were superior or non-inferior to the standard of care capecitabine in this setting. Um, the uh, disease-free survival rates between the two groups did not differ significantly. Both were uh, equivalent, and uh, that it did raise the issue that we do need to work to find um, better agents in this setting. Um, and also note that the use of platinum in this setting was associated with a slightly higher hematologic toxicities and also the need for um, dose reductions were quite frequent um, in the platinum arm. And so again, uh, while platinums may be used in the neoadjuvant setting to improve pathologic complete response rates in combination with other agents, it is not indicated um, for uh, treatment in, in women with triple negative breast cancer and residual disease in the adjuvant setting, and capecitabine remains the standard of care at this time. The last study that we covered is the WSG uh, de-escalated neoadjuvant trial looking at the role of pertuzumab plus trastuzumab alone combined uh, compared to uh, the role of the dual antibodies plus paclitaxel in looking at pathologic complete response rates. And women were randomized with HER2 positive disease to either get a chemo free approach with both antibodies versus getting both antibodies plus paclitaxel alone. And what was shown in the study initially was that PCR rates were significantly improved in those patients that got paclitaxel plus the two antibodies compared to those got two antibodies alone. And the earlier presentation did not have long term follow up data, which is what was presented. And as we can see in the ASCO presentation, the 
five-year disease-free survival rates for those women that got Taxol per day to Herceptin were excellent with uh, close to 98% five-year invasive disease-free survival rate. Um, these outcomes are phenomenal. Uh, the non-chemotherapy containing arm numerically appeared to do worse though with a five-year invasive disease-free survival of 87%. These were small numbers and the trial was not designed to compare the arms. So uh, there was not statistical power there, but however, it did appear that it did favor numerically the paclitaxel plus antibody arm across all of the analyses. And um, one interesting point though that came out is that pathologic complete response was associated with a higher likelihood of staying disease-free at five years compared to those women that did not attain a path CR. And that's consistent with other trials we've seen in the past. However, the, the most notable thing was that in women that got only pertuzumab and trastuzumab and got a PCR, they also had excellent five-year disease-free survival rates that were equivalent to the chemotherapy plus pertuzumab and trastuzumab arms, which basically says that uh, it doesn't really matter how you get to PCR, but if you do, uh, those patients are much more likely to have a, an excellent response and um, outcome over time. And that's really what um, the focus of the presentation afterwards was that looking at biomarkers, we may be able to pick those patients that could benefit from these chemotherapy-free regimens, such as using molecular biomarkers to see if they're very HER2 sensitive or enriched um, for treatment with these chemotherapy-free uh, options. And uh, also there are ongoing studies that we await uh, tr the trial data on to see if this escalation, de-escalation strategy can reduce toxicity while improving outcomes for patients. And so, uh, these were exciting presentations that um, indeed helped inform us and in many cases will be practice changing. And uh, we look forward to being able to share this information with you in uh, future events. And thank you for your attention.